Hi, I'm Melanie Ann Phillips, creator of Storyweaver and co-creator of Dramatica. And welcome to a walkthrough of the Storyweaver step-by-step -step story development software. Now in this program, we're going to look at every major feature in Storyweaver and how to use it. But more important, we're going to describe how Storyweaver can help you develop your story, whether you're a novice writer just starting out or a published master storyteller. So, let's begin. When you open Storyweaver, one of the first things you notice is its clean and simple design. Storyweaver was made for writers, not computer experts. So while it's very powerful, it's also really easy to use. Here's what I mean. All you're going to do is go through 200 interactive questions that take you from concept to completion of your finished story. Now let me show you how it works. You just go right up to this first folder, click on it, and open it to see these initial story cards. Each one of these has a little letter I on it, which stands for an information card. And when you click on it, it opens information on this side and gives you such things as links to videos and to our website, key features and how to use them, a complete description so you never get lost. The Writer Survival Kit bonus, which comes with Storyweaver and has hundreds of articles and hours of streaming video on our website to help you write your story, contact information, and links to our main website. Having looked at that section, we move on to the second folder. Now you'll notice Stage 1, Inspiration, Stage 2, Development, Stage 3, Exposition, Stage 4, Storytelling. Storyweaver does something radical. Rather than looking at the story and saying, what do you need in the story? What does the writer have to do? Storyweaver turns it around and looks back at the writer and says, what does the writer need to be creative? Well, all writers come to stories because of inspiration. Then they develop their ideas then they figure out how they're going to reveal them to the reader or audience. And finally, in storytelling, they actually present their ideas. That's where the actual description of how your scenes are going to unfold is created. So let's open up the first one of these to see how things work. Again, in instructions, we have two cards, one about development stages and one about the first stage inspiration with another video that'll help you get started. Let's close that and move on to plot. Now here's where we get question cards for the first time. It's where Storyweaver is asking us to do something. So let's click on the first one, what's the big idea? If you have an idea, any ideas at all, a little bit of dialogue, a setting, uh, maybe a scene that you've written, some character names, anything you've come up with that you think might be part of your story, this is a place to jot it down. Doesn't matter what order or what you say. You can write it in here, this is my story material. And that's where you answer it. And then, if you don't have an idea at all, you might skip the next question and go a little farther into the story, as it says here, and you'll get some inspiration ideas. But suppose we don't need those right now, and we want to go right on to integrating ideas. Well, at this point, we see another aspect of our screen. This blue area takes the what we've written in What's the Big Idea? and says, this is my story material. That's what we wrote there, and we can refer to it. So we can refer to our story material and now add these other items that we're being asked to do. Step by step, as we continue to answer questions, many of these screens will be drawn together to add new material into this reference box. So you're constantly folding in new material, constantly refining and revising what you do. This is a unique concept to Storyweaver. Previously, you might answer one question, another, and another, and another down the list, and then you get a report about what you said, or it all goes into some sort of format at the end where you can see all of your answers. But here, you start out with a story from the very first card, whatever it is you write in there, and you're then just refining it and expanding it and folding new ideas in every step of the way. After you've finished with plot, you move on to characters, and you're given some ideas about who should be in your story. This will also be drawing on references that you've already developed in your plot, and it gives you ideas if you haven't got any. Examples, background, all kinds of information. You'll come up with the expected characters, unusual characters, the unusual characters, outlandish characters, and finally figure out what your cast should be. You'll deal with names, genders, ages, how to avoid stereotypes, a lot of information on that, and a web link on how to create great characters. 
After you finish the character section, you'll move through theme and genre. And when you're finished with those, then you see your story so far. You're able to find story holes, to fill the holes, to come up with a big picture because authors too often get stuck in the details of their story and don't take time to stand back and see how it all works together in the big picture. And finally, you'll take what you've written and fold in all of the remaining material, polishing things up so that you end up at that point, at the end of stage one, with a complete treatment of all you've been inspired for. Now, armed with your inspirations, you move on to stage two, development. And here, again, instructions. A video about how we're going to go about it in a few words and a web link. And when you've completed studying that, move on to plot. Introduction, all about plot points, and then you start with your story goal. And anything you've written in the earlier sections, the important cards necessary, the important information you're going to want to draw on to help work out your story's goal will appear right in this area in the reference box that will show up automatically. You'll deal with personal goals of characters, requirements for achieving the goal, the consequences if the goal is not achieved, whether success or failure is met, and then come up with a plot synopsis and a revised overall synopsis that takes all that you did with characters, plot, theme, and genre in inspiration and folds in the new plot material that you've created. So again, every step of the way, you end up with a richer story, a deeper story that has more flavor, more shading, and more material developed for it in development. Characters, the same way. Theme, the same. And finally, genre. When you've completed the development stage, you will then know all you need to know about your story to actually sit down and write it, with a couple of exceptions. And one of them is stage three, exposition. You're going to learn about creating an exposition plan. This determines how you're going to reveal the information to your reader or audience. Just because you know what your story is about, having had an inspiration and fully developed it, they don't know till you tell them. And this is where you figure out how you're going to tell them. Are you going to tell them right up front that the goal is, is X and everybody's trying to achieve it? Or are you going to say the goal is X when it really turns out to be Y and X was just a subterfuge? Sometimes misleading an audience or having a character appear to be a villain when they're actually a good guy can be really useful in adding interest and suspense. You'll get information about how to use these and many, many more very basic tricks and some pretty sophisticated ones as well in terms of your exposition for your plot, for your characters, your theme, and your genre. After that, you move into the storytelling stage. And in this area, instructions and all about acts. You'll learn what's going to happen in Act 2. You'll never wonder again. We'll start with plot and take everything that we wrote in plot, and it will appear here, all of the material we developed, the plot points we have, and you'll start breaking them into what should appear at the beginning of your story in Act 1 what should go into Act 2, and what should go near the end at Act 3. And then you'll subdivide that material, referring to it in the reference box that will appear. And you'll have the beginning, middle, and ending of Act 1, of Act 2, Act 3, and then your final points will show up in your conclusion, which is the equivalent of your denouement, the end of your story after the climax. Then you do the same thing for everything you develop for your characters. And in your characters, you develop an awful lot of material. You've got the structural roles, introducing the audience or reader to what structural role the character performs as a protagonist, antagonist, a reason character, or perhaps the emotion character representing passion in your story. In addition, there'll be growth and there'll be a climax to your character relationships. Then you're going to divide that into acts, beginning, middle, and end. And finally, you'll end up with your theme and your genre divided the same way. But we go beyond that as well. Now at this point we've developed a pretty good outline of what's going to happen sequentially through the beginning, middle, and end of Act 1, 2, and 3 for our plot, and also for our characters and our theme and our genre. But each one has been developed independently as if it stood alone. Now is the time to blend all of that material together into our organic chapters or scenes. So we go to this last section of storytelling, 
read the instructions, move on to the very beginning of Act 1, get some information about how we're going to be pulling this together, and when you've written material up here about the sequences of each of these independently, it will all be drawn together in a reference box right here, so you can see what's happening at the beginning of Act 1 for your plot, and also for your characters, your theme, your genre, and pull it together into a single scene or chapter. The way we do that is by creating a chapter card or a scene card. We'll call this one Chapter 1. Now, in addition, if there's other material you want to refer to that you've developed earlier, you can link it in by creating a reference path to as many cards as you like, and it will show up in this screen for reference once you've created it. But let's assume right now that we don't need any additional information, and we just create our card. It's called Chapter 1, and here is where we can begin to actually write a description. This is a description of what happens in the beginning of Act 1 in the very first chapter. Okay? And you'll describe everything that goes on how the chapter evolves, or if you're doing a motion picture screenplay, how the scene evolves from its beginning, middle, and end. So now, as you see, we started with just plot. Act 1, what happens? Act 2, what happens? Act 3, what happens? Then what about the beginning, middle, and end of Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3? And now, we're going to pull it together from plot, characters, theme, genre, and we're going to create scenes or chapters and go into even more detail and say how do they begin, what's the middle, and what's the end. By the time we've finished all the way through Act 3 and the conclusion or denouement, we're going to have an amazingly detailed story, an outline that tells us exactly what's going to happen and what will happen next. And of course, if you ever get lost, you can just click on Help in the menu bar or go directly to the Help button in the toolbar, the Help icon. And here it's got a complete description of Storyweaver and all its features, screenshots, and how to do things like we've talked about in this video. Getting the most out of it, using the question cards, using the media links, and viewing images, and playing sound clips, and so on. So you'll never be lost in Storyweaver, either how to use it or where you are in your story. Well, that concludes our walkthrough of Storyweaver. To download a free demo, get more information, or to order, visit us at storymind.com, where you'll find hundreds of articles and hours of free streaming videos on all aspects of story structure and storytelling. Storyweaver is just $29.95, and with our Writer Survival Kit bonus package and 90-day return policy, you can't go wrong with Storymind or Storyweaver.